Sonoran desert summers are bone dry and brittle, but then the greening begins. Monsoon rains refresh and revive, and the desert comes alive with people. People in search of desert tortoises that are finally on the move. Absolutely, as soon as the monsoons hit, tortoises start moving like crazy. It's prime time for desert tortoises to find the food and water they'll need to make it through the winter. It's also a golden opportunity for researchers like game and fish biologist Audrey Owens. The Sonoran desert tortoise is really understudied. Um, we don't know a whole lot about it, and that's pretty much by the virtue of the fact that they're so difficult to find. You know, they live in this habitat, um, and it's a really complex habitat. You've got boulders everywhere, um, and they don't make themselves known. They spend 90% of their lives underground in burrows. We're out here studying the juveniles, um, which is a, an, an age class that we really know little about. But that's about to change. Game and Fish is conducting a first-of-its-kind survey of juvenile tortoises like this one. A radio transmitter is attached to its shell so researchers can track its movements. And so we're looking at microhabitat use, we're looking at survival, we're looking at movement and home range. Well, I'm Justin. This I'm is, Alan. We're uh, interns for the Game and Fish Turtles project. And we basically just help Audrey and Christina come out and um, radio track the juvenile tortoises here. Once we find them, we take uh, GPS coordinates, elevation 721, okay. um, and then data on their habitat, and Alan can tell you about that. Yeah, every time we encounter a tortoise, um, we take weather, weather info, and basically what, what the tortoise is doing and what's around them. We try to get as much information as we can uh, at each encounter. With the juveniles, we had no idea that one so small would move so far. We Christina Jones is the Turtles Project coordinator. She says one juvenile tortoise surprised everyone by moving three kilometers in 34 days. Which is a, a pretty big haul for a tortoise that was only 132 millimeters. We thought that it was when they reached a sub-adult stage, which is about 180 millimeters, that that's when they made their big movements. But now we're learning, we've had two of them that made pretty big movements just over a short period of time. And that's really exciting to know that, that it's the little guys that are, that are making, making the moves to find a different place to, to occupy. So far, researchers are radio tracking 14 juvenile tortoises thanks to the sharp eyes of hardworking volunteers. They are critical. Without the volunteers, uh, I think we would be tracking seven tortoises instead of 14 uh, with the juveniles. And also, they find, they find the adults. And I just want to first welcome you guys out here and thank you all for waking up before the crack of dawn to join us on our first survey of the year. So we've been monitoring the population here since 1991. That's when we marked our first tortoise. As of 2013, the Arizona Game and Fish Department has marked about 200 adult tortoises at this long-term study site located northeast of Phoenix. Um, and so we've gleaned a lot of information from the research that's been going on. The survival of adult tortoises is, is pretty high, about 97%. We've done research on the reproductive ecology of female tortoises. So take a look at this and get your search image. Again, you're not looking for movement because the adults tend to freeze when they see you. So we're looking for active tortoises. We're also looking for inactive tortoises. Anybody have any questions? After the briefing, volunteers go to work. So the majority of the tortoises that we come across are marked, but just about every year we come across at least one adult tortoise that's never been marked. A volunteer discovers the first tortoise hiding out in a burrow that gets a lot of use. It's a uh, burrow number 387. And that soil burrow has been used by, at least in the last 10 years, it's been used by eight different animals that I'm aware of. Christina goes in after it. It takes a little bit of work, but she finally manages to slide the tortoise out of its burrow. It is our first tortoise of the day. It's tortoise number 611. Uh, she is previously marked. We encounter her at least once up to three times a year. The first time she was captured, researchers gave her an ID number and filed notches into her shell. It's a code based on the marginal scoots of a tortoise shell that represent different numbers. By adding the numbers of the scoots that are notched, you get the tortoise's ID number, in this case, 611. It is a female tortoise. I don't know how long she's been in the study, uh, but I'm going to guess that she was probably marked sometime in the last 12 years. Christina places 611 on a can, so she can't walk off while she's being processed. The, um, the guler scoots here underneath the chin are what they use for fighting each other. Nearby, um, Audrey does the same with tortoise number three. 
When we find a tortoise, we collect information on the habitats surrounding that tortoise. We also collect weather information, just basic temperature and humidity, uh, wind speed, cloud cover. And with that, we are hoping to be better informed on when tortoises are most active. And look at this, she's almost too big for my calipers. They also record a variety of other information about the tortoise, including its weight and size. 283. And then we're going to do a health check on her real quick. Eyes bright. Eyes are bright. Eyelids are normal. I always look at their, at their nostrils and I see if there's any um, exudate or snot, if you will, uh, or if they're clear. And if they are clear and if she is, has smooth breathing, then we can be fairly certain that she is not exhibiting any clinical signs of upper respiratory tract disease which is not something that we have had documented at this site before. To minimize the chance of spreading disease from tortoise to tortoise, researchers wear latex gloves and disinfect all instruments that come in contact with the tortoise before moving on to the next one. As the morning progresses, the search continues. Danielle Shorts, an ASU biology student, is enjoying her volunteer experience. Yeah, I really want to work in conservation, so this was a really nice opportunity to kind of see what other people do in the same field. It was kind of nice to see that they were doing something like this, and I thought, well, this is a chance to see a tortoise out here in the desert, and that would be pretty cool. I'll go on the left side if you want to go on the right side. Okay. I love that my job is basically an adventure. I mean, I come out here and I never know what I'm going to see. Rattlesnakes, Gila monsters, javelina, and even mountain lion tracks are all quite common. But an unmarked tortoise is the best find of all. Since this is a new one, we should probably take a picture. This will be tortoise number 673. Christina files the corresponding notches and applies a coat of clear epoxy over an ID number that's written on the shell. I just marked a new adult tortoise on this site. And uh, we come across maybe one or two a year, but as I mentioned, we've got 100, well now 195 tortoises marked here. And so that's really exciting to know that the amount of time we spend out here and we're still finding animals that are new to us. It's interesting to be able to see the same wild animals, you know, two, three times a week. It's been a lot of fun. So I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's the best job, <laughs> best job I've had. And so what we're doing now is reattaching the antenna of the transmitter here, just putting a, another dab of epoxy on top. After some minor repairs, this young tortoise joins the other juveniles that are making their monsoon moves. They just might be leading researchers to new discoveries that will help protect and conserve the Sonoran Desert Tortoise.